Hey there, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. My name is Vicki Howell. I am the host and creator of The Knit Show with Vicki Howell. And I'm thrilled to be here with you right now um, on Joanne's Facebook Live page and later on our partnered YouTube playlist. So why don't we dive right in? It is almost Halloween one of the grandest holidays that ever there was. And so I thought we would come, we would do another Halloween yarn craft. You might remember, you might've seen the video I did a couple weeks ago where we took a funkin, kind of like the teal one behind me, and cut it and turn it into a planter and then crocheted a cool little hanging web around it. Well, today we're going to be crocheting again with the new crafty mascot. It's totally the new owl. A cacti, a cactus rather, um, but this one is more macabre. This is a creepy cactus, a spooky succulent, if you will, and it's something that I created just for the holiday um, with just a few little alterations to a plain old everyday cactus. So the complete constructions are, uh, constructions? Instructions are on the Joanne blog. And so what I thought today what I would do is give you my five tips for successfully making this creepy crochet cactus. So first off, let's talk about what we call these, these toys, these crochet little creatures type things. So recently on The Knit Show, we did an episode called the Amigurumi episode. It's episode number 107. And we fully focused on projects like this one. So what does amigurumi mean? So that's our, that's our tip number one. So you'll be able to throw around the, uh, the crafty vernacular at parties. Because <laughs> of course that's what you talk about it at your favorite cocktail party. So amigurumi is actually a Japanese word or it's, it's a portmanteau of two Japanese words. One um, meaning uh, knitting or crochet. They actually use the terms, they have one word to uh, describe both crafts and um, the other meaning plushy toy soft toy that kind of thing so amigurumi is any sort of animal or object that's crocheted in a toy like fashion so this is an amigurumi cactus and um, it's made a little bit creepier with a couple of details so one it's made in black so it's obviously dead you know like a Halloween soul. Um, the spikes, instead of cute little prickly ones, we went, we used some hard metal from the jewelry department, or actually it's from the wearable from the t-shirt aisle um, at your local Joann's. Instead of a traditional flower, I added a wee baby pumpkin with a tiny stem that was actually, I just cut off from a faux succulent from the floral department at Joann. And then it is planted with some creepy spider web and we kind of roughed up one of the terracotta pots that you can buy there. Super cute. This would make a great gift for teachers or party favors if you were having a Halloween dinner. Do people have that? They should, because that would be amazing. Or really just for decoration. Super fun. Kids would love this. So I'm going to give you, so that was number one. Now we know how to, we know what Amagurum is. Number two, I'm going to show you the technique that almost any amigurumi piece can be started with. You don't always have to do this, not every pattern is written this way, but I'm gonna show you what's called the magic ring or magic circle method. So what this is, is this is the method for how you start the beginning piece. So the top of this piece, actually I'm gonna pull in a green one because it's easier to see on camera. This piece is worked starting from this very center of the top and then it grows out and then worked downward. So I'm going to show you how if you use this technique called the magic circle or magic ring, how it alleviates or it gets rid of the open hole that you can get if you chain, join the round, and then create the circle around that. Why is that useful? Well, because amigurumi are always stuffed. And so you could easily sew it, but it takes out a step if you do it this way because you don't want your stuffing spouting out the top, right? So I'm gonna grab my hook. I'm using a clover hook and just some chunky yarn. So I'm also not, I'm not gonna be using black yarn here either because it's a little hard to see on camera. So I'm gonna flip the camera around to show you this part and then I will meet you back here face to face after that to move on, okay? I'm gonna do the little flip around here. You'll probably see my messy studio. All right, so we're all set up here. 
So to create the magic ring, you take your yarn, lay the tail over your fingers, just a couple is fine, wrap around and you'll see a little X form and you just use your thumb just to hold it into place. Then you take your hook and by the way, there are more than one, there's more than one method to creating this. This is just what I think is the easiest. So then you take your hook, you go under that first strand, grab a loop with the second strand, kind of pinch, take your fingers out and you'll see that you have this little like lasso looking thing. And then you'll create a chain one. And what that chain does is it sort of uh, just makes it secure. All right, so from here, for this particular pattern, you'll need six single crochets to start. Uh, if you're watching in the UK by any chance, that's a double crochet. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Actually, I'm gonna go slower for this last one just in case anyone needs a refresher course. Yarn over once, pull through one loop, yarn over one more time, pull through both loops. Okay, that's six. Okay, here's the magic portion, crafty gods willing, of, um, of the magic ring. So what this does is because we've crocheted over both the tail and our working yarn, we can pull and it retracts. There's the magic. So you were able to pull and you could do that with any amount of stitches and it completely closes the hole. Now for me, for this pattern, I'm actually joining. So from here, you would go ahead and join with, not using your tail, join with a slip stitch. And that's all there is to it. See, you've got this great start. Your stuffing's not going anywhere. If your hole starts to open up, you just pull on the little tab. Super easy. Any project, and we're talking amigurumi today, but you could also use this for if you were starting a crochet hat from the crown out, um, or really anything that starts with that base circle. So that, my friends, is tip number two. All right, I'm gonna flip the camera around again. We never know what that means. There are my supplies. Okay. All right, so we've covered magic circle, what amigurumi means. Let me just adjust this a little bit. Now let's move on to my tip number three, which is tips for stuffing. Okay. And if you are typing any questions, for whatever reason, this app does not allow me to see them. So I will come back um, on YouTube and on Facebook, go through the comments and answer them after the fact. So I, apologies there. Also, if you know anybody that enjoys amigurumi or cactus, I mean, everybody's into cactus right now, right? Or Halloween decorations, please like this video and share it. Sharing really does help spread the crafty word and we appreciate it. Okay, back to stuffing. So you can absolutely use the regular polyester stuffing for this kind of thing, but I find it bugs me, especially when I'm using a darker color to see the white showing through. So there's a couple things that you can do. You could get a black stocking, stuff it and stuff it in there, but I think it's easier and it actually ends up to be about the same amount of money and maybe even less if you just use the yarn that it came with. So let me cut my tail. And you can also see what this piece is looking like a little bit closer, how it's the how there's ribbing. And bookmark this pattern. Again, the pattern is on the Joanne blog because it's creepy now, but if you make it in green later, it can be any time. You could even decorate it with tiny wee little beads from the bead section at Joanne's um, or teeny tiny ornaments for Christmas. Really, the Southwestern options are endless. Okay, so what I do is I tuck in the tail, and then I just take the yarn that's connected to the ball and I just start stuffing. And this is a chunky yarn that I'm using right now. I used a uh, Bernat Softy Chunky, but any of the, the chunkier yarns in the aisle, um, in the yarn aisle will work. I, re I recommend using a yarn that has a little bit of acrylic in it because it holds its shape a bit better. Okay, so I'm just going to stuff just keep on using, and you know, you already had to buy one, 
had the pleasure of buying one skein so you're not having to spend any extra money so it all works out so you just keep stuffing until it's how you like and it will look great you won't be able to see look at that no matter how much i stretch you're not going to see any white stuffing so you could keep going until you felt super happy with how it looked okay all right so that's my tip number three for amigurumi. Use extra yarn, especially when you're working with the chunky yarn as you're stuffing so you don't see the white poking through. All right, number four, let's talk adding spikes. The spikes for our uh, creepy cactus. So I got these spikes, as I mentioned earlier, in the t-shirt decorating department. Sometimes they have them in the jewelry department, not with the spikes like, or not with the little um, I guess bracket fasteners, hmm. that may or may not be an actual term, um, on them. Sometimes they're beads and you could totally use those. You'd have to just hand sew them on. But I'm going to show you what I did and I'm also going to give you another option if it's, if you want something a little more comfortable. So I actually just took my fingers, I'm not going to kid you, not the most pleasant feeling on my fingers in the world. So if you don't want to do this, I'll tell you what else you can do. But for me, I was like, well, they already have the spikes on them. So you just go into one in between the ribbing and you poke one in wherever you want it to be and then I should have done this before I stuffed but you just take your fingers I can't really see what I'm doing and you fold back here I'll show you what I'm doing I'm just taking my fingers you see this and I'm folding them. They're really, really pliable. So as long as you don't go straight in, you're not gonna poke yourself. But disclaimer, that's probably not the manufacturer's instructions. So if you're not that into doing that, you can also just hot glue them. So you would just take, you would just take a hot glue gun, put in a little glue, like so. And if you do this, I highly, highly, highly recommend using, you can find these, these are by Plaid. These, um, my friends Kathy and Steve designed these for Plaid. They're called hot glue gun helpers and they will save your hands. I have so many scars and blisters from not using this kind of thing. So the other thing that you could do is you could add the glue right to this if you wanted to. And then if you just pat it down, you can make sure it's secure. With this, you won't burn your hand. And then later, there will be a little bit of glue showing, but you'll be able to pick it off. So either way, either use your fingers to apply them by just reaching through and dealing with the prongs or hot glue them. You do you. Okay, so that was number four. My last tip is let's talk planting. So we want, up, we want our little cacti to have its own little home. And so this is just a terracotta pot from the floral department. And they come in that, you know, terracotta color. Uh, so I painted this one with just some regular craft paint, gray. And then I took another, just a sponge brush. And with some black craft paint, I just did little swipes just to make it a little... I don't know, spookier, have a little funky interest. I mean, if ever there was a time for crackle paint, your spooky cactus would be the time. I didn't think about getting it until after I was already home from the Joann. So I went this route, I still like the result. So what we're gonna do, you may have noticed, we just have this little sort of cylinder. How is it going to stand up like this? It's actually super easy. So you're gonna take your pot and then you take polyfill stuffing. I'm gonna scoot this back so you can see a little bit better. Aim this down a bit. Okay, so you're gonna take your stuffing and just put it in there. Okay, that's probably way too much. So just kind of figure it out, stuff it in. And then you wanna take your hands and you wanna create, like you wanna dig a little hole. It's a little channel, right? And it needs to be big enough to fit the circumference of your cactus. So if you find that it keeps, that it's a little too puffy, just remove some. And then 
From there, once you have a nice hole, you just wanna take your glue gun again, and you'll just around the perimeter, again being careful of the heat, add your glue. And then from there, you'll just sit your cactus in there. You do a little pinchy action, hold it for a couple seconds, you know, hot glue dries, lickety split. If you want, if you feel like you needed a little more stability, you can also stick a straw. I like the cardboard ones that you get in the baking aisle through the top, through the bottom, then stick it in there so that you have that extra security, that extra straight foundation. Also, like a broken, you know, like takeout chopstick would work too, a skewer, or you can just do it like this. Okay, so the finishing touches are kind of optional, but I thought they added a little something. So the stuffing looks very similar to this, but it doesn't break quite apart. So I have the um, faux webbing that you can buy in Joanne's uh, Halloween aisle, just their novelty aisle. Um, you've all seen this before. It's, it comes with these great spiders and it pulls apart to look very, very web-like. And so what I did is I just added some to the top and it melds right in because it looks very similar to the fiber fill. So that's why I said it was optional. I just like how I could pull this down, attach a spider. I also added a little moss. I had some moss left over from the floral department from another project. I added that too. It would also be really cute to put a bunch of, you know, tiny black or orange pebbles, um, really anything just to sort of fill and give that more of a scape. So really, really cute, creepy cacti, super fun to make. You can make this probably in about, I don't know, maybe like two, three hours, just in time for this year's Halloween. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. Again, I'm Vicki Howell. Check out, if you're into Amagurumi, please check out the Amagurumi episode. It's number 107 on the Knit Show with Vicki Howell YouTube channel. Also, please check out the Joanne um, partnered playlist on that same YouTube channel. And if you're on the Joanne app, look up for a little craft that you can do with your kids. I have a project for tassel yarn ghosts pretty ferocious fiber if you ask me. So take a look on their app and tune back here to the Joanne Facebook page. Meet me here in a couple of weeks where I'm going to be showing you how to arm knit a last minute Halloween wearable. Until then, take some time to be creative, hand make with, with Joanne, do some crafty programming watching and have a great, great rest of your week. Mwah. Bye.